and uniform. Okay, let's move on. Let's do a problem. A ball is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. A. How long is the ball in the air? A ball is thrown up with a velocity of 20 meters per second. It goes up and comes back to the same position. How long is the ball in the air? What is the greatest height reached by the ball? And see, when is the ball 15 meter above the ground? Okay, let's see. Can you do this, the first part, on your own? We have done problems like this. How long is the ball in the air? The ball is initially here, it is thrown up, and it comes back to the same point. How long is it in the air? What that means is, what is the time taken for its displacement to become zero? Is that right? When it comes back to the initial position, its displacement becomes zero. So the question here is, how long is the ball in the air means, what is the time taken for its displacement to become zero? So you can actually do that right from the displacement equation. All right, let's write down the given data. Initial velocity is 20 meters per second. That's the velocity of projection. Acceleration, remember, anything that is thrown up, the moment it is released, its acceleration is directed downward and is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So, its initial velocity we know, its acceleration we know. The position function for the ball thrown vertically up. What is the position function for the ball that is thrown vertically up? What is the displacement equation? Y equal to, for vertical motion we use Y. Y equal to V0T plus one half AT squared and in place of A we will use negative g, that is negative 9.8. So, y equal to y0 plus v0t minus 1 half gt squared. And y0 is 0 because we projected the ball from the origin. So, y0 is 0. And I want to add a word of caution here. We have used here the negative sign. It is this negative sign we have used. So, once we have used the negative sign, don't use the value of g to be negative again. Because it is this value of g that made that sign negative. And so, what will you now use g equal to? g equal to positive 9.8. On the other hand, if this, you keep it as positive, then A will be replaced as negative G. So I, I hope you understand it. We have used the equation minus one half G T squared. So you will not use that negative again. Okay, here Y zero equal to zero. When the ball comes back to the ground, Y will be equal to zero. Is that right? When the projected ball comes back to the ground, when the projected ball comes back to the ground, y will be equal to zero. So in this equation, we are going to set y equal to zero, y zero is zero because it's the origin, and then we will replace our g by 9.8, we will replace our v zero by 20 meter per second, and solve for t. That is what the problem is. Okay. So we have 0 equal to 0 plus 20t minus 4.9t squared. You can now solve this equation. Or 20t minus 4.9t squared equal to 0. Or I moved all this to the left. 
it'll be 4.9 t squared minus 20 t equal to zero and I factored out the t. You see, this is the step before that. I wrote it like this, 4.9 t squared minus 20 t equal to zero. That is, took this to the left, became positive. Took this to the left, became negative. And the right side is zero. And then I factored out a t from there. It gives me t times 4.9 t minus 20 equal to zero. And now set each factor to zero. It gives you the first value of t is t equal to zero. And the next value you set this factor to zero, 4.9 t minus 20 equal to zero. And solve for t. What does that give you? You see? For those who are not following this, I set the second factor to zero, 4.9 t minus 20 equal to zero, or 4.9 t equal to 20, or t equal to 20 divided by 4.9, which is 4.08 seconds. Again, we have two values of t. Why are there two values of t? The first value is just when it begins. At t equal to 0, y equal to 0. And after a time t equal to 4.08 seconds, again y equal to 0. That means the time taken to go up and come back is 4.08 seconds. Well, we're going to use one more concept here. If the time taken to go up and come back is 4.08 seconds, what is the time taken to go to the maximum height? The time taken to go to the maximum height is half of this time, which is 2.04 seconds. And the time taken to come back is another 2.04 seconds. That's very important. The time taken to go up equal to the time taken to come down. All right. Let's do B now. B, what is the greatest height reached by the ball? Well, in order to find the greatest height reached by the ball, we need to know the time taken to reach the maximum height. Well, if t equal to 4.08 seconds is the time taken to go up and come back, what is the time taken to reach the maximum height? It will be half of that. So the time taken to reach the maximum height is half the time taken to come back. So we have t equal to 2.04 second, the time taken to reach the maximum height. Therefore, y max will be y of 2.04. In other words, if you write y as a function of time and put that time equal to 2.04, you will get the value of y. Can you give me the equation for y? y of 2.4 is v0t minus, look at this, we have y of t equal to y as a function of t equal to v zero t minus one half g t squared. You see, y of t is v zero t minus one half g t squared. V zero is twenty meter per second. The time taken to reach that maximum height is 2.04 minus one half of g. g is 9.8. One half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared. You can see that is what this step is. y of t equal to v zero t minus one half g times t squared and we replaced our t by 2.04 seconds. 
And what does that give you now? Where is the object at the end of 2.04 seconds? That is 20.4 meter. So at the end of that 2.04 second, it is at y equal to 20.4 meter. I hope you understood we saw solving that problem. The position of the object at the end of that 2.4 second can be obtained by using t equal to 2.4 second in the position function of the object. Now, C, when is the ball 15 meter above the ground? In other words, what is the time taken by the object to be 15 meter from the ground? That means here we need the time when y equal to 15 meter. So here again, we will write the position function. What is our position function? y of t is v0 t minus 1 half g t squared. That is the position function. And so we will write, let me write that position function for you. So my position function is y of t equal to v0 t minus 1 half g t squared. Now, what are we supposed to find? We are required to find this value of t when this y equal to 15 meter. That is what this c means. When is the ball? What is the time for the ball to be 15 meter above the ground? The value of y is 15 meter. So 15 equal to v0 t, 20 t minus one half g is 4.9 t squared. All right, can you solve that equation? Rewrite this equation as a quadratic equation. You can move both these terms to the left and make the right side zero. So that will become 4.9 t squared minus 20 t plus 15 equal to zero. That is a quadratic equation. And you all know how to solve a quadratic equation. I'm going to leave it for you. Is that right? Well, you know this is a quadratic equation with A equal to 4.9, B equal to negative 20, and C equal to 15. So T will be negative B plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and that will be negative b b is negative 20 negative of negative 20 plus or minus square root b squared is negative 20 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times C is 15 all over 2 times 4.9. All right, I'm going to leave that for you to do. You will get two values of time. And I got them as t equal to 0.99 second and t equal to 3.09 second. Now tell me, why do we get two values of time? Well, we get two values of time because the ball gets to a height of 15 meter once while going up and while coming down. You see, two times the ball becomes at a height of 15 meter from the ground. Okay.